How's it going everyone? Today, another tutorial on the Android side of things. So we're working together in order to teach you how to do a couple of things if you're on the Android side. Now, this video does not make sense if you haven't followed the tutorial on how to access the Android side of things and also how to get root. So without root, this will not make sense. So hopefully you're able to follow after you have watched those videos. Every video will be in the resources below and every file that you need will also be in the resources below. Hopefully you guys are able to follow that. Now, let me get into a little bit of how this works and why, what is the problem? So on the Lightphone 2, if you want to connect to certain devices, for example, if you wanna to connect to a smartwatch, or if you want to connect to your car, it requires that you give a code so that you input the code because of the layout of the light phone. Then of course that creates a couple of difficulties and it doesn't allow you to connect to your car because you're not able to input that code. So no luck, right? Well, once you access the Android side of things and once you access the, um, the bootloader and you have rooted and everything again follow the first two videos and then come to this one then you can edit a couple of the properties that allows you to connect to your car just do it once connect to those devices that you need and then after that you can come back to those devices on light os on the application without any issues so let us get started again after following those two videos so the first thing that we need is we're going to need an app called root explorer so after you have downloaded that app again the link will be in the description below you can go to root explorer and you have two areas you have storage and then you have uh, root you will not be able to access this without root so make sure that you have root and you have followed the videos then you will go to data and after you go to data we're going to go to storage i believe or properties there it is properties and here you see a couple of different things, uh, persist.radio, persist.lightOS. And this is the one that we're looking actually into. It says persist LightOS disable system Bluetooth. That's the one that actually disables the command for you to input different things into the Bluetooth section. As you see, there's also persist LightOS disable the status bar. So you don't see any notifications that come from Android on the top. Now, all of these are good things. And again, it's, it's intended to be used. I'm just teaching for those of you who are more on the tinker side of things and you want to get into a couple of things here and there. So again, I'm just teaching you if this is what you want, if this is not what you want, then just use the light phone as it is. I'll be having my 18 month review coming up soon. And again, GPS is coming soon. So I'm really excited for that. But once you hit the persist light OS, you're going to click and you're going to open it with the text editor. So the text editor right here, will give us persist.lightOS. And as you see, it says true right here. Now we're going to expand this window so you're able to see it a little bit. Maybe, there you go. So it says true, and we're going to just edit it by deleting and putting false. Now that we have done that, and again, I hope we're going to save and exit. This will save a backup uh, in there. Now we can go back. And again, these are the apps that I have loaded. I have loaded virtual keys. I have loaded a bunch of stuff in the middle and in between in here. So again, you need to watch the first two videos. Once you have done that, you still need to reboot. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this and we're going to tell the terminal ADB reboot and that will reboot the device. Um, the device is, as you see, is rebooting, it's getting into new things. And once you're back into it, you can go into settings, you can go into Bluetooth, and you're able to pair your car, you're able to pair whatever device you need, and boom, there you have it, no issues whatsoever. Now, a word of caution, wherever, whenever you go into LightOS again, whenever you uh, step away from the Android side of things, and you go into LightOS, it will put back that property into uh, true instead of false. So whenever you switch between light OS and Android, you need to make sure that you stay on the Android side of things. You reboot and you get to the Android side of things again in order to pair the device. If you get back to light OS, then you will not be able to do this. So I'm going to showcase again my screen, screen copy, and boom, right here we have it. 
uh, I'm able to go and pair up with any device that I want. I'm going to just make an example of this and going to unpair the Galaxy Watch that I have uh, paired previously. Uh, with my device. So I'm just going to bring it in here. So just to, just for you to see that this actually works. So let's go into settings in here. And let's go to connections, Bluetooth. And then I'm going to forget the Galaxy Watch. Forget it. Forget it right here. Perfect. So now we're going to pair a new device and we're going to search for available devices. We see the Galaxy Watch right there. And as you will see, it asks for a code in here. So I'm going to press check. I'm going to press pair right here. And boom, I'm able to do it. Now, I also have connected my car to this uh, and that takes a little bit longer because my car is super slow. But you're able to do all of these different devices without any issues you're able to pair them with the Light Phone 2 without any issues anymore. And now I can go back to LightOS. Again, I click LightOS and LightOS will take over the device. And I don't have, it doesn't break the Bluetooth connection because I connected it via the system settings. So now I go in my car and I'm able to get calls and send texts or different things depending on how your car is compatible and no issues whatsoever. So. Uh, make sure to um, you know try this out if you're into it. You have to again first watch the two videos. If you are on firmware version 79, I believe that the bootloader is no longer accessible very easily. So if you actually want to do this, you may have to need a couple of extra tinkering things. We'll get to a guide on that hopefully soon as we figure things out as you know the pieces are moving, but. Again, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll get uh, to it on the comments and I'll interact with you guys. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.